Hey guys, it's Cal, and uh, this is a super shitty video due to the lighting in here and the fact that I drew this diagram higher than my tripod can go. It's a video on why, for anyone who's curious, the AYC system in the Evo and Legnum Galant VR4 uses automatic transmission fluid or ATF3. So the first thing I wanted to do was explain how an automatic transmission works, right? So we can compare what it's doing and why it needs ATF style fluid. And then we can look at an AYC diff and see why it needs the same. So I have my handy dandy super long screwdriver pointer here. So essentially the components of the automatic transmissions hydraulic system is that there's a pump which pressurizes the automatic transmission fluid to a high pressure but that same fluid also needs to lubricate the system so we can't really have two separate fluids in here it would just be way too complex so what we want is a single fluid that can act both as a high pressure mechanism for pushing things like clutches and also for lubricating gears so our pump in the case of an auto transmission is we have an engine which is permanently driving the torque converter and that torque converter when it's spinning which is whenever the engine is turning is driving a pump and this is a, uh, like a, a pump that's sandwiched at the front of the automatic transmission and this pump takes the automatic transmission from the uh, bottom of the pan in the transmission and pressurizes that into the valve body. So this example here, this little bit here is, is the valve body in the auto trans. I could have drawn a bit bottom under here, which is like the reservoir of fluid, but imagine underneath here is an unpressurized reservoir of fluid. Then, and inside the automatic transmission, there is a series of clutches and bands. So you can go and watch any of the gazillion videos on YouTube about clutches and bands and planetary gear sets and whatnot. But essentially the automatic transmission will use valves, now whether they're electronically controlled solenoids or governor controlled um, valves that mechanically open and close to open and provide pressurized automatic transmission fluid into, in this case here, this is a band and it's gonna clamp over this and stop this actual uh, drum here from spinning. Or it's going to pressurize a clutch pack and once the clutch plaque pressurizes, it will control whether a uh, planetary ring gear inside there or the actual um, central shaft is going to spin or not. So you can control it with bands or clutches. But basically what we have is a pump, which is pump creating high pressure fluid. And that fluid is pressurizing clutch, band, clutch plates or bands. And based on what is being pressurized and locked from turning or forced to turn is what creates those various gear ratios in an automatic transmission. And in this case, I've just drawn three drums with three sets of clutches. It's, I don't even know if that would match a real transmission. But that's how an automatic transmission works. It has that same fluid lubricating all the rotating parts and being pressurized into things like clutches to lock components of the automatic transmission up. So let's keep that in mind, and now let's go and look at how an AYC diff works. Okay, so I'm back, and I've uh, graciously gone up into my roof space to get my spare and broken AYC pump. Got this off a wreck ages ago. And we're gonna describe the flow of fluid on my crappy diagram here, but we'll be able to reference it back to an actual AYC pump. So we knew how the auto transmission worked. It takes ATF and compresses that fluid and uses that compressed fluid via opening and closing valves to drive clutches that lock up inside the actual automatic box, automatic transmission case box. So the way that AYC works is we have a pump and that's the pump here and that's it there, which takes fluid from a reservoir now that reservoir of fluid is in the back of the car and if you've got a legnum you know when you open the tailgate it's off to the right and there's a little um, panel you can remove and you'll see it in there. Now the pump, when you start the car, after a few seconds you'll hear the pump whine like a 
and it'll slow down as the pump builds pressure in the accumulator tank and that's it here. So what the pump does is it builds pressure in this tank then the pump switches off and the pump will only start up again when the pressure in that accumulator tank drops below the level or pressure necessary to drive the actual AYC system. There are two solenoids and this is them here on the AYC pump and the computer controls these solenoids. So the pump has a very um, high current connection because it's a pump compressing fluid and the solenoids don't. They have a fairly low current connection. These are controlled by the AYC ECU here directly. So this one's relay switched and I believe these ones are just driven directly off the AYC computer because relays are slow. So as you go around a corner and you're turning the wheel and accelerating and the car, the AYC ECU is monitoring the uh, yaw of the car and decides it needs to correct something, what will happen is that the solenoids here will open up, right, and apply the pressurized allow, so the pressure in the accumulator to push the fluid in these lines to actually lock up the left or right clutch packs in the AYC assembly. Now these don't lock up the axles or anything, they're called speed gears and what they do is they relatively speed up or slow down a wheel for example. So if you're going around a corner and you're outside, uh, going to, around a corner to the right and your left rear wheel starts to spin, the speed gears will apply to actually slow down the speed of that wheel or speed up the speed of the other wheel to actually equalize the and benefit the cornering. I'm no engineer. There's a lot to the science of this, but we're trying to talk about why it's, why it's ATF fluid. All right, so we know that ATF fluid is really good for pressurizing clutches, but what we can note is these are, um, this is the pressurized path but from another video I've got, you'll also know that the AYC diff has an unpressurized bath of ATF fluid in the actual case, and that is a separate reservoir kept separate from this ATF fluid here. So the question is, why are they separate? Why can't they be the same? So here's the secret. Why? is the fluid for the bath that the gears run in and the clutch packs are rotating in different from the fluid being used under pressure? And the answer is, you can't keep the electric pump running all the time. It pulls a lot of current and what we're just doing is pumping up an accumulator and then turning it off and turning it back on when the pressure in the accumulator drops too low. So if we had the pump running all the time and the fluid um, pushing on the piston having like a bleed off so that it bled back into the bath here and that the actual pump was pulling from the same bath, then the pump would be running all the time when the solenoids are opening, right? So we're gonna bleed off pressure and have to keep the pump going, which causes a lot of current draw. So instead what we do is we isolate this fluid from the other fluid and we allow the pump to run just briefly. Okay, so why could the pump not use other oil? Well, the pump should use this kind of oil because it is a pump which is driving a gear set in here to drive a fluid at high pressure. So we need that fluid to do two things. One, act as a hydraulic fluid and two, be able to lubricate the actual mechanical component of the pump. ATF is perfect for that. That's how an auto trans works, right? The pump has to be lubricated and yet whilst also uh, compressing that fluid. So why does the, uh, a, the, the diff assembly itself also use a non-compressed bath of ATF SP3? Well, the answer is again, it's a excellent fluid for lubrication of the gears in here but it's also an excellent fluid for when these clutch discs are compressed together that it will actually still allow the clutch discs to grab. So you can do the same thing, for example, in a wet plate clutch system in a motorbike where it uses engine oil as that 
uh, both lubricating fluid that can also provide that friction necessary depending on the material. But it actually makes sense in this case to use the ATF SP3 oil because you're also uh, lubricating these very high tolerance gears whereas engine oil doesn't actually have to do that. We're talking you know heavily meshed gears here like what you would actually see in the automatic transmission. So it makes perfect sense to use ATF SP3 for the bath of oil in the actual diff itself because it's also great for the gears and the clutches when the clutch packs compress. But at the same time, that same type of fluid is also the best fluid to use for the actual pump system because that pump can run briefly, have the gears lubricated, have the lines pressurized and push on these clutch pistons without actually having the oil break down. So that's why ATF SP3 is the best kind of oil to use in the AYC differential system, even though the two oil supplies, the bath of oil in the diff and the actual pressurized oil are two separate reservoirs.